it's scary for children to see their mum go into prison, to be like handcuffed and put in a car and taken away. You feel like you've lost your parent and there's nobody to talk to about it. When I wasn't able to see you, I wanted to tell you that I got bullied a lot and so that you could help me to like stand up for myself. I used to think if something did happen to me on the way home, there's no one that is at home waiting for me. You're a mum and you've screwed kids' lives up because you chose to. No, you didn't choose to do it. I'm sorry that it took for me to be taken away, to be, <laughs> to be a good mum. She's had her first birthday with me, first Christmas, first Mother's Day. That was our first picture because that's when we went to KFC when I first came. Well, it is Mother's Day every day for me, with my kids with me. Yeah. It's scary for children to see their mum go into prison, to be like handcuffed and put in a car and taken away. I was six, I think, when I left my mum. It was all really confusing for me, obviously, because when I was really young, I didn't really know what was going on. Foster care homes, I think I've been to about five different ones. Once I moved like twice, I just gave up with making new friends. I just like to be on my own a lot. I never settled into like a home because I never felt like it was my home. I just wanted to be with my mum a lot and my family. Most of the nights I would like cry myself to sleep. Like it was hard for me. When I found out my mum was going to jail, I was about 16 years old. I was really shocked, I didn't really understand. I get to see my mum about every three weeks. When we do get to see each other, it is amazing. It's the best time that I have. Happy Mother's Day. Oh, it is. I love it. You do? It's so nice. This is a card for Mother's Day for you. Thank you. I hope you like it. <laughs> it says, to Mum, happy Mother's Day. Hope you have a good day. Lots of love, Izzy and Holly. So nice. <laughs> <laughs> When I found out my mum was going to jail, um, my only option was then to go into independent living. There was no sort of, do you like it or do you want to live there? It was just move my stuff in and that was it. The difficult thing was for everything to be on you. I had to do my dishes, I had to do my washing. If my electric went, it was on me. I was 16 and it basically I was the only person that could have helped myself. I also had to quit college because I had to get a job to afford my bills. I felt like I'd failed myself even though it wasn't my fault. That was probably the most difficult thing that could have happened to me is losing my mum. I'd lost her again, even though I'd lost her in care. It was like an extra loss now. I wasn't being able to bring her when I wanted or I couldn't just meet her for a coffee. Like it, it was a complete different separation. 
the first night it was easy, but it was it was probably a couple of weeks after that and I was going to work and it would be I'd be coming back and it'd be late. I used to think if something did happen to me on the way home, there's no one that is at home waiting for me. So that was a that was scary for me. It makes me sad when you say that. <laughs> but yeah, that was difficult. But at 16, you should have somebody waiting for you to come home. That photo there was the first contact. Before I came home? In five years. Yeah. A lot's changed fast, like it's all been fast, but a good fast. My experience from the criminal system was a lot. My first sentence was only three months. That was for shoplifting. The second one was six months. That was for GBH. And my third one was a six month again, and that was just for fighting. I was a nasty, drug-taking, unfit mother in a violent relationship. I didn't have a life from the start as a child, so I didn't really know what life was about. Now I didn't have that guidance. I went to prison for conspiracy to defraud. In total, it was an eight-year sentence. For Around 20 years, I was in a domestic violent relationship. I would drink as a coping mechanism and I would accept the abuse because I had such low self-esteem. Izzy and I's relationship has always been that Izzy's parented me for as long as I can remember. From the age of around seven is when the severe abuse took place and Izzy would stand between me and the perpetrators. I was the best mum I could be at the time, but when I look back, I know that that wasn't good enough. My children weren't getting the support that they needed. When Izzy first came to see me, she was sobbed and everybody in the visit room was looking and she, she held me like she never ever wanted to let me go. And I just stroked her head and tried to reassure her that everything would be okay. What would have helped would have been more support for my drug addiction. Maybe if the police and social services would have helped me get away from the area with my kids, away from the domestic violence, maybe then I might have had a chance of keeping my kids. You're a mum and you've screwed kids' lives up because you chose to. No, you didn't choose to do it. No, any mother would tell you that. My relationship with my mum, we do have our ups and downs, but she's like my best friend. It's been really nice just to spend time with her and tell her how much I'm proud of her. We've always been close, but from what we've both gone through, I think it's kind of made us stronger. When I wasn't able to see you, I wanted to tell you that, like, got bullied a lot and so that you could help me to like stand up for myself. I wanted to tell you that I wanted to be home earlier. Um, I'm sorry the way things went. If I could have changed it on my own I would have. And I would have helped you and I would have been there for you. but you're going to be fine now.
I think being able to come out and release on temporary license has saved Izzy and I's relationship because it's given us something that we can do together on a fortnightly basis to keep that bond, to keep them family ties and to grow stronger. When I said goodbye to my mum, at first it was very hard for me because I sort of was like, why do you have to go now? It's sort of a happy time because I feel like, yes, she's going, but I know she's going to come back. Your relationship with me is the most important relationship yeah. I've got. When you're calling me all the time, some people are like, why is she always calling you? But I feel like that's just because we've been that, had that separation. Obviously, we want to be around each other more than other mums and daughters. Yeah, and I think because I... I'm always conscious I wasn't the best mum. Yeah. I, I'm so conscious of being that now. And I think if I could have said anything to you back then, it would have been that I'm sorry that it took for me to be taken away, to be, <laughs> to be a good mum, and that I wish I could have done that without all of this. And I can never give you that time back, but I'll try my best. Yeah. I'm always really proud to be like that to my mum. You got through it, but then you did better as well as just getting through it. I love you. I love you. <laughs>